Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk everything K-12 Canvas related. My name's Lauren and I'm the Canvas Queen and I'm so excited today to be discussing Canvas modules. What are Canvas modules, you may ask? Well, Canvas modules are essentially sections of content that you can organize all of the things that you create within Canvas. So whether that be an assignment, a page, a title header, a discussion board, all of those things can be organized into one place and you created essentially some linear flow for your students to access and work through that content. I'm gonna show you guys an example of a module and then I'm gonna show you how you can start building within a module. And then at the end, I'll show you guys some really great things that you can add some elements and features within Canvas modules. Now, of course, before we get into the nitty gritty of this video, I would absolutely love it if you liked this video. Liking my content just helps me find those educators who may be struggling with Canvas LMS. Um, and then subscribe. I'm so excited that I finally reached the 5,000 mark. That's really a cool accomplishments so thank you all of you who have subscribed and have followed me also over the years all right let's go see what modules look like how we can build them and some added features within them So what I first want to show you guys is an example module. So before we get into building, this is what modules can look like. And I thought it was just really important to show you kind of like the layout and organization. So I have four sections here. I have an introduction section, a reading and notes section, activities, and assessments. Now this is a science lesson or like unit, chapter, whatever you want to call it, um, for describing motion, but essentially this can be applied across the board. So you start with, in the introduction section, we have like a lesson overview. I love to start with some sort of pre-assessment. What do the students know before we get into the nitty gritty of the content, right? And then also, let's get the students talking to each other. So I show like some sort of video, and then the students are going to collaborate and discuss within a discussion board. So then we get into kind of like the direct instruction section, which is maybe some notes, reading assignments, and vocabulary cards. And then this is more so like the student-led activities, which um, could be anything. These are science specific. So we have like labs and things like that, worksheets, all of that kind of stuff. And then finally is the assessments, which you get the post-assessment. So what did you learn after this lesson? the summative, and then you completed the module. Good job. <laughs> so let me show you this real quick in basically the same layout, but with a different subject. All right, so now we're looking at a module for an ELA class, and you'll notice we have the same similar section. So we have introduction, reading notes, activities, assessments, and then we even have like a little conclusion section here. So you'll see it's this is the same kind of outlining that we've done, but it's for ELA instead. And then you just kind of fill in the sections with like what comes at the beginning of the lesson, what comes in the reading section, activity section, assessment. And of course, you can make all of these sections up yourself. Now let's actually build a module. So I'm in an empty course here and you can kind of already see that the home page is auto set to modules. So you can see here, choose course home page, it's already modules. So I just am going to leave it at so. If your home page is not set up this way already, just go over to your course navigation and click on modules and then we're going to get started. So all we have to do now is click that blue plus button or even click this wonderful large button in the middle here and we're going to type in our module name. So for the sake of time, I'm just going to do module one, add the module. All right, so now I have this wonderful drop files here to add to the module. This is great, but the misconception 
with this, at least what I've seen from people in the past, is that they can like click and drag Google Documents or Microsoft Documents, you name it, and it's going to like be turned into an assignment of some kind, that is not accurate. Whatever you place in here is just going to be essentially a file that your students can view. They don't have access to like make copies or edit it or anything like that. So just so you're aware of that, this is just like a drop file section. To create assignments and to create the body essentially of the module, you're going to go up to the plus button and you have all of these options here. So we have assignment, quiz, file, page, discussion, a text header, external URL, which is just a link to a different page, or an external tool, which is related to apps that are integrated into Canvas. Now, normally I don't use these two because there's really no point in them. They, especially for the external tools, you can't really utilize them here. Um, so I would just ignore these two for the most part and pay attention to assignment, quiz, file, page, discussion, and text header. So we can start with text header actually and just do our introduction. Okay, so I've written it down add the item. So now I have a title header. Now what I'm going to add is, so I'm going to add a page and you'll notice here that I actually have my home page available. So when you create pages and other things over in the course navigation, let me close over in like the pages section, when you create a module, it's going to pull everything from your course that's been created and allow you to essentially start adding content. Everything is all in one place. <laughs> okay, so we can create a page though right here. And I'm going to name this page lesson outline. Perfect. Add item. Okay, so now this is all this is right now is just a blank page, but I can go back and fill it in later. So I have that. Now I want a to add a quiz, a pre-assessment. So now I'm going to create a quiz and write pre-assessment. And this is how I would actually create stuff. I would just start creating my outline. Even though all of these are empty right now, I would basically create an outline module. Moving on, so now I want a discussion board. So we're going to create a new one. We already see there is one right there, but I'm going to do discussion number one, add item. Now let's create a new text header, a new section, and let's call this the reading and notes add item and then we can now start adding maybe assignments so we can do create a new assignment assignment number one the next steps are really repetitive so i'm just going to speed through this but i wanted to point out the main point of building this as kind of like empty and starting with an outline is so now you can go back fill things in fill in a page Fill in all the directions for an assignment, fill in a quiz, and then you can start duplicating it, right? So once everything's done, you can start replicating. We have built a module and it's time to go in and start editing all of the different pages, quizzes, assignments, discussions, all of that fun stuff. But now I actually have an outline that I can use. So before I showed you guys this outline module that I had for science, what I want to actually show you guys is at the top here, there is a teacher answer key slash template module that has written do not publish. So what I have done essentially is created templates. So you can see here now I could if I was using this course, I could use this as a template assignment and nothing is attached to it at all. The no rubrics, you'll see they're all zero points, but it's just really easy for me to come over to the three dots, hit duplicate and then pull and drag it down to a new module like this basically. So now it, I have a new assignment within my module. So that's the last thing I'm going to show you guys is that you can add or edit your module so that there are either prerequisites, meaning that your student has to complete, you know, the prior module before they begin the next one, 
um, and so on. Or you can also add requirements, right? So you can say students must complete all of these requirements and then you can have the option of doing it in order. I don't necessarily like to do this all the time. Again, it's a preference, but then my students can like, for example, if I ever want to provide them with choice in a module, the checking this box is not beneficial for me. So I like to actually keep it unchecked, but make sure that like they have to complete everything before they move on. So I'll usually add like a prereq, but then, so like they have to complete everything in the module before to do the following things. And this kind of turns into a personalized visual student checklist in Canvas. Students must view the item, or you can even have them make sure they mark it as done. Um, That's for a page. Now we can choose, let's say the next one was the pre-assessment. The students must submit the pre-assessment. Uh, let's do, we did a quiz, let's do a discussion board. The students must submit or ooh, we can do contribute to the page in some capacity in order to move on to the next module, right? And when I'm saying next module, I mean they have to do all of these things I'm adding here in order to move on to the next module. It's not just that one thing. And then the last one, let's do like a, an assignment here. We'll do score. They must score at least a 7.5, 75% in order to be granted access to the next module. And then we can click update and then it'll show at the top here the prerequisite is you must complete everything in the teacher module, which is this module, but again, we're pretending it's not that for right now. <laughs> and then they have to complete all the items in order to be able to move on. Let me publish all of this and we'll take a look at it real quick. Here's the module and what we're going to do is we're going to click on this page and you'll see I have to mark this as done in order for it to be considered complete. I move on to the next thing. Let's say I don't complete that quiz. Let's go back to our module page here. So now you'll see I have received check marks for completing. So I marked this one as done. So I got a check for that. I did not submit this pre-assessment. So I did not get a green check mark for that because I did not complete that. And you'll notice if I hover over it, it actually will tell me what I have to do in order to get it to turn green or into a green check mark. All right, guys, I want to thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that it was helpful and you see why Canvas modules are... Oh, hi, Tobin. Oh, my puppy. <laughs> And you see the reasons why using Canvas modules are so beneficial to you as the educator and also for your students to stay organized and have clear pathways within Canvas LMS. If you have any more questions about this topic or even about a different topic, feel free to leave your questions in the comments below. Again, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye!